I am built this entire low profile deck in one day while staying on a budget. If you want to know how to do it, keep on watching. Let's get started. Just a mere couple of weeks ago, my backyard went from this to beautiful grass. However, there was one large section of the yard that I didn't apply grass to, and that's because I'm installing a low profile deck at this location. This is going to be a floating deck system, and one of the most important factors of installing this process is to make sure that the ground itself is perfectly level. In order to do so, I do grab my laser level and determine where are the high spots and where are the low spots. Once the ground is smoothed out and level-ish, I can get to a weed barrier. You do want to apply some type of barrier between the soil and the crushed rock they're going to be bringing in afterwards. Also keep in mind that this is drainable, which means that any rain that falls onto the deck can easily be dispersed through this barrier. I stake off all the corners along with the overlapping seams, and once that's fully applied, it's time for our crushed rock. For this type of project, you do want approximately two to three inches of crushed rock over this entire area, just to make sure you have proper compaction before we get to our deck. This material is called out as 5 8 crushed minus rock, which means there's small rock particulates in this mix, so you're easily able to compact it after it's spread out evenly. Once dispersed with a shovel, I then grab a lawn rake and just try and rake it out as smooth as I can by the naked eye. Unless you're some type of masterful leveling genius, you are not going to be able to get it to a desirable levelness without some type of screed system, which I am double checking levelness as I go over the surface. This is actually a very quick and straightforward process, especially on a project of this size. The deck itself is gonna be 12 feet by 12 feet. So we have approximately 144 square feet. Now that we're working with flat terrain, you do want to wet it down and start the compacting process. I'm just taking a hand tamper over this entire surface just to try and compact this base as much as possible before we get to footers. Now that we have all of our rock fully compacted and level, we're gonna put down our footers. And for this project, we are using Tough Blocks by Build Tough. These are some great plastic footers that are way easier to handle than your normal concrete footer and it does just as good of a job if not better. So we're going to go over here, still use the laser level just to make sure that everyone on the very top here is measuring the appropriate dimension. Everyone on this project should be approximately nine inches from the very top here and noting all the way across. If there needs to be some slight adjustments, we can do them at this time and right now is the best time before we get to a lumber. Just gonna double check them, especially with the fact that we have these guys every 12 inches. Now, because we put so much time and energy into making sure that the base itself is perfectly flat, this really comes into play into time efficiency at this point, because the vast majority of all of these tough blocks are perfectly level at the correct position ahead of time. If I need to adjust it slightly up or slightly down, I can always give it a little shimmy, as you can see. We're installing three rows of these tough blocks because generally speaking, you don't want any section more than 60 inches away from each other to have a proper span rating. But as you can see, the installation of these footers were quite straightforward and we can now move on to lumber. On this project, we are using two by six pressure treated, which is plenty of structural support for a project like this that's so low to the ground. And I always line up our joists accordingly just to see if there's any Ridiculous high spots, low spots, warps, like this guy. Yeah, that's not gonna really work out in terms of making sure everything's laid out properly if you have one that's so bowed out like this. So just double check your pressure tree lumber before you start the installation process. We are using 12 footers and this deck is 12 by 12. So we do have to still make cuts, but they're very minimal cuts, which is very nice for waste purposes. 
Our two rim joists will be cut at exactly 12 feet, and once cut, I immediately start doing some layout. The first joist is placed at 8 inches, but the remaining joists are 12 inches on center. I will provide more information as to why we're laying out the joists in this fashion, but generally speaking, I do like 12 inches on center on any deck composite material. All the remaining joists will be cut at 11 feet 9 inches, and that's because we have to burn 3 inches due to the fact that the thickness of this material is 1.5 inches, and we have two sides to account for. Now one of the easiest and most satisfying parts of this entire project is to just line up all of our joists with our tough blocks that we previously installed. And that coincides perfectly with introducing the sponsor of this week's video, Tough Blocks by Build Tough. I've worked with them for many years now, and they are continued sponsor of the channel, which is extremely nice, but it's also nice that I get to work with a product that I know and trust. These footers are extremely lightweight, made from 100% recycled materials, and each one of them can hold over 1,700 pounds, which means we can really overload this deck if need be. If you want to personally check them out for yourself, I'll make sure and have a link for them in the description box of this video. As I mentioned earlier, the first two boards that I cut are exactly at 12 feet, and each joist is laid out at 12 inches on center, except for the ends. The end boards are at 8 inches, and that's because we want them completely concealed from the exterior, but we also want to make sure that they're as close as possible to the ends for proper support. I nailed off all the joists along our back side of the deck across our fence line and then gave the entire system a few love taps in order for it to get as close to the fence line as possible. Prior to nailing off the remaining joists on the opposite side, I do want to take the cross dimensional measurement to guarantee that we have a perfectly square deck. That measurement should be the exact same or very close to before you finish nailing off your joists to your rim joists on the opposite side of the fence line. That cross-dimensional measurement really does play a large factor when it comes to the ease of installation when it comes time for decking. But now that we have our joists fully nailed in, we can get to blocking. This is the last bit of framing that we have to do, but I always suggest applying at least one row of blocking, which not only stiffens up our entire structure of the deck, but it also provides the ability to reduce the chances of any of our joists bowing or flexing over time, which can be done especially since it's so close to the ground and closer to moisture. This is also another nice added bonus for our tough blocks because it allows you to align your blocking perfectly with the piece right adjacent to it. Now you do normally want to stagger your blocking, but in this circumstance, in order for it to line up perfectly with the, our tough blocks, I'm just doing it one after the other after the other and placing a couple galvanized ring shank nails on both sides. And if you're interested in purchasing any of the tools or materials seen in this video, I'll make sure and have a list of all the products used in this video in the description box so it's easy to find if you're taking on this endeavor yourself. With our framing fully installed, it's now time for a bit of waterproofing. Now this is called G-Tape and this is joist tape that is applied all over the tops of our joists. You certainly don't have to do this step, but it's generally good practice nowadays, especially with composite materials, because back in the day before composite materials, your joists would always last longer than your decking boards. Now that composite materials are so popular, those are actually lasting longer than your joists. And this is just a nice, easy way to keep your joists looking good and feeling good for hopefully many, many years to come. But now that we have our tape fully applied, we can now finally get to decking. In order to expedite the installation process of this entire deck, we went with a clip system, which is not my normal go-to, but it really does provide an easy and efficient way to install our decking. And it all starts with this U-channel clip system on the very front row of our deck. I install one of these clips and then use a chalk line to determine exactly where the rest of the clips need to line up. Once all those clips are installed, I then insert my very first deck board into the clip system and we're now ready for the rest of the installation of our decking. Only thing is, we're going to be using a different fastener at these locations. We've done the hard part, now it's time for the fun part. The actual decking with these camo fasteners. Now these camo fasteners is a really nice clip system that just clips onto the joist with a stainless steel prong that goes in between the groove systems of the deck. Makes it super fast and easy to install 
but it isn't my favorite fastener. Just keep that in mind. Cortex fasteners are my favorite fasteners, but these ones still do a very good job as well as keeping it in budget and time sensitive. These things be installed so much faster than a Cortex fastener. So keep that in mind on your project and know that it's still a very good fastener, but not my favorite. The added bonus of going with the camo system is that they also have accessories, tool accessories to make the installation process even easier. This is the camo lever and it actually allows you to put pressure on the deck boards simultaneously on multiple sides of the deck while also being able to install your fasteners quickly and easily as you can see. This is a very nice setup because I'm normally on my hands and knees just trying to make sure that I have even pressure as I'm installing all of our deck boards. But with this, all I have to do is make sure that the lever is tied in nicely on both sides and we can swiftly install the remaining fasteners and proceed to the next sections. I decide to position the majority of my remaining deck boards into position so I'm ready to start installing quickly and efficiently with our camo clip system. One of the main reasons why the system is so quick to install is because it also comes with this never miss guide system, which you have the ability to place this guide right over your fastener and with the drill bit that comes with the kit also is the perfect extension length. So you tighten it down properly, but you don't over tighten it or under tighten it, thankfully. The uh, camo fastening system is already extremely fast, but this camo drive system makes it even faster because we're able to literally stand while we're screwing them into place. The slick little system where the drill literally comes out and just like the yellow cap system that we just used, this essentially the same exact thing except for you're in a standing position versus on your knees the entire time. As someone who has spent countless hours on my hands and knees installing decking boards, this type of installation method is a complete game changer when it comes to the consideration of speed. Because in my mind, if I was doing this size of a deck with a normal Cortex fastener, it would have taken me all day just to get the deck boards down and installed properly. Not to mention the caps that have to go with that system. Here, I'm literally able to get all these deck boards fully installed within a matter of a couple of hours. And if you don't believe me, you can always check out the live stream. This was the first time I ever did a live stream on a particular project to see if I was able to get it done within a full day. Now, I didn't show the whole thing because I didn't get to fascia, but I was able to get footings, framing, decking, and fascia done within an eight hour period. And that's including all the time it took me to film. And that always makes things longer for installation purposes. Now, the one large error that I made for this entire installation process was the spacing. I thought these Cortex fasteners were a quarter inch spacer, which is really nice for installation, but it is actually three sixteenths of an inch. And when you add all of that up across this entire platform, that means I had to purchase another piece of material along with ripping it down so it can fit the rest of the deck. In my mind, I should have had all full boards, but hopefully on your deck project, we'll make sure that it's accounted for ahead of time. The deck boards I'm incorporating on this project is Trex, and it is one of their more budget-friendly options. Each one of these 12-footers was approximately $30, and that is extremely budget-conscious when it comes to composite material. But now that all of our deck boards are fully installed, we can now finally cut off the excess and get to fascia. In order to get the perfect cut the very first time, I need to make sure I have a proper measurement in order to snap a chalk line to note exactly where I need to cut the ends of our boards to line up appropriately with the joist underneath. Measure the long side of your circular saw and transcribe that measurement to the other side of your chalk line. Then align your fascia board with that mark and tighten it down with a couple hand clamps. You should do this to both sides of your fascia board and once tightened down, you can take your circular saw and run it right up against your fascia board, which will then cut the ends of your deck boards at the perfect length. Once this cut is made, we can move on to our fascia. Our fascia boards are a thinner material, but it's also much wider to accommodate the overall thickness of our joists along with the decking material. I cut two sections that are approximately one foot in length and then cut a 45 degree angle on one side. 
I do this for a number of reasons, number one being a mitered edge always looks better to me than a butt joint here, and it's a whole lot easier to manage a small section like this when trying to get a perfect angle. If you have to apply a couple small composite shims, which I did have to do, you can easily do that at this location with smaller material versus if it was one long span with a mitered corner at the end. As far as installation method is concerned, I am using a very high quality clear construction adhesive, applying that in a vertical direction so if there is moisture here, it can still seep through, and then installing some fasteners. Now these are hidden fasteners. I'm using Cortex fasteners, but I did pick up caps that specifically match this color of decking. Technically, based upon manufacturer's instructions, they don't want you to actually plug these holes because the material is thinner, but with the construction adhesive in the back, I've never had any issue with any of these fascia boards coming apart over time, so I'll take my chances. The plugs themselves are from a company called Starborn, and they're called out as Pro Plug System. I apply these plugs on the one deck board that I installed them on, along with the entire fascia board, just to have a nice, crisp, perfect look in the end. And with that, we are done. I love a project that comes together so quickly and efficiently, and this project is something that I've been wanting to do for a while now because I have a few different ideas of what I'm gonna be putting on top of it. Feel free to guess what I will be putting. Also, let me know if you want plans for this build because I'm happy to do so if there's interest. But as always, this is truly one beautiful, sexy beast of a deck. Oh yeah.